Welcome back to the greatest podcast ever made in the history of podcasts. At least that's what I like to call it. This is the Dating While Adulting Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Michael, and that is your other one, Reggie. Say hi, Reggie. Hi, Reggie. Cool. And it's funny, we were having a conversation before we started recording about having threesomes in <laughs> web apps about threesomes and finding swinging naughty dating and stuff like that which is obviously some kind of scam to get people's money but just the fact that there are some suckers that will sign up for it with the hope of finding somebody to flirt and hook up with and have sex because you know as you look at some of these websites and you look at some of these women in the websites, mm. I can pretty much guarantee you that these women that you'll actually meet on this website, if you meet any, won't look like these women. Won't look like that. Yeah. <laughs> and on this threesome site, they won't look like this. And the reason I'm looking at these things is because Reggie's wife brought them to my attention. And so... Yeah, and there's even a such. You know the you know the implications of what that. <laughs> you know you just threw her in the bus, right? <laughs> I know, right? And that's why I said it just like that. Because <laughs> oh, it was funny to me. And on this one site, it's like for all all things you want. Oh, it's actually the one this American threesomes. It's like it only you can only find threesomes in certain states. Ah. Uh, you're yep. going to find threesomes in certain states. Yeah, you can, it, the website is only available in Arizona, California, Florida, Illinois, New York, Michigan, Massachusetts, Texas, Virginia. Oh, and Washington. Virginia! Yeah, so you just need to take a little short drive and you can find what you need. All right. And they also have BDSM dating, swingers dating, cross-dressing personals, cuckold dating. <laughs> now, I'm, now I'm, I'm laughing, but I'm, not, I'm laughing that because I think anything is wrong with this i'm laughing that they actually have i guess well i guess that stuff has to come into the modern era also but i thought those things were a little bit more uh inclusive what do you mean inclusive oh like not alternative no, no more so not inclusive wrong word uh exclusive there we go exclusive like what the fact that you almost had to get a damn invitation and your first blood your first born because they don't just randomly just pick people well i guess if you're on this site and you say you want somebody to dominate or submit and somebody says i want to be dominated or submit or if i want to cross dress or swing hey i guess you can make up your own rules the cu to be honest the cuckolding thing is a little weird to me and for people that don't know what cuckolding is basically <laughs> Allow me to educate you. <laughs> what cook holding is? Hold up, hold up, hold up. I gotta get the tea. Yeah, yeah. Shoot, you might need something stronger for this. <laughs> I wouldn't need one of your wife's hot toddies. Man, oh, hold up. I go get the Jenny. I not, we don't have, that's my daddy talking about Jenny Walker. I go get the, uh, the Crown Royal. But Michael forbid me from drinking online. Right, I there's did. A good, there's a good that, reason. That would just be a mess. <laughs> it's the Honey Jack that she uses, but. Uh, for people that don't know, cuckolding is basically when you are married or in some kind of relationship and you want to watch somebody knock down your wife. A BBC, mostly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mostly, <laughs> mostly, mostly BBCs. Okay. I'll take Reggie's word on that. But yeah, if you are a man and you want to um, pleasure yourself by watching somebody else pleasure your wife, hey, I got a site for you. <laughs> and even though i don't understand it i'm sure there are things that i'm with that other people don't understand so hey this is the no judgment zone also known as dating while adulting.com <laughs> and yeah we're gonna have a conversation about that one day well the one thing i will say about that well i was on the sly getting picked up for a threesome before i realized what was going on Oh, I was like, boy, was, where is this going? No, no, no. And it was, I was at me and Mario was at a race and we met this couple and we were chilling because, you know, it was after the race and they had this concert and stuff like that. And this woman was talking to me. Oh, okay, you know, blah, blah, blah. She, we doing a little flirting, blah, blah, nothing real serious, stuff like that. I'm like, oh, she's cute. Blah, blah, blah. You know, we just talk about the race and nothing, you know, just doing my thing. Then her husband came up. I met him. We started talking, blah, blah, blah. Everything was cool, blah, blah, blah. 
then the conversation started to take a left turn. So do you live around here? Almost like that. Come here, the boy has my ice cream. <laughs> so was it a threesome situation or was it a cuckolding situation? I don't know. I I pretty much said, oh, look at the time. I don't know which one it was going to be. <laughs> okay, right. okay, Reggie. It's hard to say with you because you are the same person that thinks that everybody's hitting on you. Did they have actually Mar like tell you, yo, we want you to come and interact yes. with us? Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's interesting because when we were in Vegas, um, me and you and your wife and the person I was dating at the time, we went to a club and a couple tried to pick up me and the woman I was dating at the time. And it was the weirdest thing. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, it, it was so weird because the guy was like, hey, you two should come party with us at our house and stuff like that. And the woman was looking like, help me. So. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, so it was just strangely awkward. And then the woman I was with was like, uh, you better do something. Uh, <laughs> that was that was one of those cases where she was like, hey, you better protect me. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I better accept my position on this one. Shoot. Yeah, so that was weird. But and actually, another another story. <laughs> Since you, you brought up this Pandora box. So me and my friend, Gene, used to do races in Indy. And we went out one time uh, to a bar club. I think it was House of Blues. I don't remember. So we were just, you know, live music and shit like that. Blah, blah, blah. It's a Friday before the race. And um, met this couple, right? So, you know, we're sitting there getting chit-chatting, blah, 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 blah. And just like your scenario, all of a sudden, it's like, yo, so um, you want to come back to the house with us? I'm like, um... And Gene was being clueless, you know. He's like, sure, we go. We got, got, got this. I said, uh, Gene, um, let's 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 go get some drinks real quick. <laughs> so I brought her with us. Said, you know, they try to pick us up, right? She said, Oh no, I didn't realize that. I was like, Yeah. And said, No. And so we went back to the table. No, we had to get ready for the race. So you know, we got to go back to our hotel. Well, we can get to the hotel with you. Say, No, we're cool. <laughs> it's okay. What did it look like? I don't, they were not necessarily ugly. They were, they were our, you know, like I said, this was, this happened. So I was in my mid forties. They're probably a little older than us. So probably where, where, where we are right now, fifties, uh, early fifties. They didn't, they weren't ugly. Okay. Well, of course I don't believe that anyone's ugly, but I don't believe that God makes ugly people, but um, as a friend once told me when I said that about one particular woman in particular, one particular woman, she said, well, who made her the devil? <laughs> oh, oh, that's cruel. Yeah. <laughs> that's even cruel for me. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I am really that person that does not believe in the word ugly. And I do not believe that God makes it ugly. people. I don't believe that anybody's ugly, even though their personalities might not win them any points still. See, that's why I call it ugly. I, I, physically, physically, uh, I can I can roll with you. That personality, though, know, mm, that makes him ugly. Sorry. Yeah, I go there. Yeah, but with that said, when I asked um, how these people looked at hit on y'all, you were like they weren't ugly. You, you weren't speaking about their personality then. But, <laughs> but with all of that said, yep. oh, oh I, you say one no, what? Go ahead, no, no, yeah, you caught me. No, I was just gonna I, say I, another, I, I admit that one. <laughs> no, I was just gonna say another thing that uh, was interesting to me, just every now and then I like to like revisit some of my dating exploits or whatever like that, as sad and pathetic as they are. I think after all of these years, after all of this time I spent dating in various platforms and however you want to meet somebody, I actually think I was catfish for the first time. Or it was an attempt at catfishing. Mm -hmm. What exactly um, is that again? That is when you try to sell yourself as someone else um, because I guess you're ashamed of how you look or what you have. So if it's, if it's online dating, for example, what you do is take pictures and post them of someone else. Uh, and then, gotcha. yeah, try to like bring them in and eventually you try to like, you either just like like talk to them forever and date them and make excuses as to why you can't meet or whatever. 
<laughs> like the NWA yeah, surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't really know how what the desired goal is in that whole thing. I guess the in the grand scheme of things, the person is supposed to fall in love with your personality and they're supposed to forgive what you look like. <laughs> Go figure. So um, I met this woman online and we had a little back and forth. Um, I asked her for her number. And she said, well, you can text me. Okay, she gave me the number and she said, we can text. I had a really bad week. That was the first time I ever heard that. So that was unique as the kids are playing outside. Mm. Yeah, all 20 of them. We know how you love, trick, love the kids. <laughs> I miss my neighbor so much. Anyway, <laughs> so, so she gave me her number. She said, you can text me. Like, okay, never heard that before. So I text her and she said she had a really bad week. And I'm like, okay, well, it's over now. So, hey, you got a weekend to recoup. And then she's like, yeah, give me like these short answers and stuff like that. And so I'm like, okay, this is just weird. So I don't text her anymore. She texts me the next day just saying hello. So again, oh, lighter, Richie. <laughs> yeah. Again, mentioning how sad she is. And I'm like, well, what happened? Your mommy asking. She says, well, somebody really important to me died. Now, my whole thing is, okay, somebody died that's really that important to you, that's that's close to you, and you are on a dating app. Mm, I was thinking that. Texting people. Yes. So, okay, that makes a lot of sense. So I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, anything I can do for you? Um, well, no nothing nothing i'm just so sad i'm like okay so i'm like all right forget this she texts me the next day <laughs> how you doing i'm like i'm doing all right you feeling better not really i'm so sad <laughs> <laughs> dude you sure you weren't getting set up for a sting of little, a 14 year old <laughs> Shit. Oh. Well, GB, I was thinking, GBI is supposed to come rolling you out. <laughs> I was thinking the other way. I was like thinking that she was going to be like, because I was like, if I ask her, like, if there's anything I can do, I thought she was going to be like, well, if you could send me a thousand dollars, that would really help me because we can't bury them in there in the backyard getting stale right now. That's where <laughs> I thought it was going. But she was like, no, there's nothing you can do. I'll be fine. So I was like, well, maybe we can talk on the phone then. And she's like, and speaks to boredom, the fact that I entertain this foolishness for this long. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay. Um, she, she called me like an hour later. I, I wasn't able to get to the phone. And then I called her right back and it went straight to voicemail and um, never heard from her again. So I don't know what to make of that. It sounded catfishy-ish. But... <laughs> But it was um, interesting, and I guess I didn't send out the right signals. But word to the wise, if somebody does die close to you, get off dating apps because that will lead people to believe that you are being um, you are cold and sensitive B. Yeah, which is what I didn't want to be because I mm -hmm. hear that all the gash darn time. But, you know, but anyway, let's get into what I want to talk about today. <laughs> it's funny to me in this whole dating process how things have changed in terms of what men want men expect and more particularly how men are treating women how men are approaching women how men are courting women and this is fascinating to me because there's like this uprising of men who are bitter and they're like not afraid of talking about their bitterness and all of that stuff and well the reggie <laughs> The He Man Reggie Woman Club. That's right. The <laughs> He Man Reggie Butt Hurt Woman's Club. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I started thinking about it and I started thinking about like the traditional, the well, the different ways of like courting a woman. And it kind of and it kind of leads to why men kind of view dating differently and how their why their approach is different. And the first example of how a man has traditionally courted a woman was that a man would meet a woman and he would do all of these things to show himself to that woman. 
and not require anything from that woman. This is the guy that would like throw his coat over a puddle of water and the woman would walk over it. She never offered to pay for his dry cleaning. <laughs> I'm about to say. <laughs> I'm about to say. But that was just the thing that was expected from a guy. I guess that's that form of protection they keep saying they want, huh? It may be. <laughs> it's like, hey, protect your, protect your shoes from getting wet. Exactly. Yeah, at my expense. <laughs> the thing about it was, in some circles, it was almost rude to demand anything from a woman. It was just like expected that that's what a man was supposed to do. And a guy would always just assume that, okay, once I get her to break down her walls, eventually she'll open up and bestow all of this onto all this, all these gifts. Once you know, you go around Jericho walls, blowing a trumpet three times, Jericho walls come tumbling down. Yeah. So all of these, all of this money and all of this time that I've invested into this woman, eventually she'll see that I am the man that I portray myself to be and she'll open herself up and she'll repay me tenfold That's in right. all of this. With the 70 versions and all that shit. Well, I'm not getting that <laughs> deep into it, but especially since you're getting married to this woman. <laughs> but, and, and I have a friend who is funny because he dated, he met a woman, he dated this woman, he married this woman and then when he married the woman, he started to get frustrated with the woman. And the reason he got frustrated with the woman was because he had put all that time in thinking that when they got married, that's when she was going to be the wife. And what was funny about it was when he finally got into an argument with the woman about what she wasn't doing, her response was, yo, this is what you get, what you presented to me. This is the lifestyle that you presented to me and got me accustomed to. It is basically your fault. <laughs> for Just like a woman. Yep. <laughs> no accountability yep. whatsoever. Not saying, you know, you make a point. I am going to pull my weight. I am going to do more. I am going to be a bigger contributor in making this relationship successful. She was like, yo, this is what you did to get me. <laughs> and as such, this is what I'm going to be. Forget what you expect of me. I expect you to continue doing what you were doing before. Now, I respect that in a sense. <laughs> but to. yeah, yeah. He didn't respect it and they wound up divorced, but it is what it is. I mean, yeah, I mean, he probably respected, it, but it was like, well, shit, I signed up for this. So, <laughs> you know, you know, that's yeah. part of that's part of the movement. The whole, you know, the movie you actually talk about is the Mac Top movement, men going their own way. And, you know, when I, we first started this podcast, I was doing some research on this stuff um, just to understand another perspective on it. And um, there's this one guy. Yeah, Reggie does research. Uh, actually, there's another guy who actually gives advice to men and stuff like that. And funny that you bring this up because his, lat his latest video, I can't remember his name. I wish I could shout him out. Um, was talking about the laziness and entitlement of the modern day woman, which speaks volumes to what you're talking about right now. Well, well <clears throat> let me be let me be clear. I'm talking about one of three different ways that guys court women. I'm not making any blanket statements about women in general. I'm so. making blanket statements because that's what that's what I'm here on the show for. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have what you call i'm the one i'm i'm not you know you know i'm i am nwo in the wrestling and when rick flair turned dirty and, <laughs> and start beating up people become the bad guy i'm the bad guy we, we we're all in black now <laughs> first of all it was hulk hogan that i see i didn't watch that i didn't watch that became the bad guy so no it was in w it was in w also no, I'm saying Hulk Hogan started the NWO when he came over to WCW, and the trick was he came over as the Hulkamania, yellow and red. Oh yeah, you do. I do remember that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, okay. No, when was which one was Ric Flair in? Because I can't remember. Ric Flair was the anti-NWO faction of the WCW. 
we actually talk about wrestling here. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna <laughs> play that. Anyway, I was I was gonna let it go, but you know, you bring up these these odd references that I have to like provide context to, and even though I provided context to it, people are still listening, and saying, "I don't give a fuck." Yeah. So, so, <laughs> so, so the point is, I don't know what Reggie's role is. We never discuss what Reggie's role is, but hey, Reggie, Reggie, that's Reggie's view. Reggie sticks to it. It is what it is. I am not going to say that women are lazy. Of course uh, not. I will say that <laughs> men. Of course I will, not. I will. <laughs> you still trying to get them, so of course you're not going to say that. Here shit. Here we go. No, I, I, will, hey, I don't have to pander. I will Amazing say. Amazing and tattered as fuck. <laughs> I will say that um, men that fall into that first category and who choose to make that investment hoping that they'll get some back in return i think those guys are kind of suckers sucker <laughs> yeah i mean you have to do it, it should be expected that a man should do more for a woman especially in the courting phase but that should all level up out and you shouldn't be doing so much more that you're getting nothing or peanuts in return for what you are doing become so, did we have a podcast about this about uh what women bring to the table some shit like that seems like every podcast is about that but what, what exactly do they bring to the freaking table well <laughs> that is not for me to answer um <laughs> well, you didn't single man <laughs> oh, i guess it is you have me. to answer i guess it is for me to answer you know what if you find a good one <laughs> why, are you, why are you laughing why are you laughing <laughs> that wasn't even a shot i wasn't even trying to say anything foul that's some funny shit right there. <laughs> if you find a good one. There are good and bad women. There are good and bad men. There's if, nothing. If I just happen to find those lucky lotto numbers. <laughs> oh, boy. Like I was saying. I think I can find a lotto numbers before you find a good one. <laughs> oh, my God. Like I was saying, if you find a good one, you, you find that things kind of work in this. Hold up, I'm, I'm still not finished with that. Get a wish upon a star. <laughs> if you find a good one. <laughs> That's a funny shit. That's a funny you shit. You a long time. You done? Uh, I think I am. <laughs> I think Let I Let me am. know when you're done. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Can I fold a friend? <laughs> Hey, Michael said that you find a good woman. Oh shit, that's some funny shit. Okay, I'm done. Okay, sure. Yeah, I think I am. Okay, yeah. cool. And then you say some funny shit, some more funny shit. Yeah, like I was saying, when you find a good one, things kind of work in concert together. It's like she knows what you need and she'll supply that, and you know what she needs, she, she you'll supply that, and you work together. It's a partnership, not necessarily just like do all of this stuff for me and maybe if i feel like it i'd do something for you maybe press so, syndrome <laughs> so <laughs> anyway servant but, hey peasant, peasant but, come blow my feet <laughs> but it's ultimately it's ultimately on on those guys to not just like poor be simps. stuff yeah be simps what the what's, the, what's the simp um it's a derogatory term for what's going around on the internet called beta men or men who allow women just to walk all over them okay it's that youtube stuff i pick it up those youtube terminators uh terminologies it's riding my brain okay okay so okay like a simpleton yes okay okay so yeah it's 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 up to those guys to demand more and if you don't demand more and you lose out on your own investment you're partially to blame for that because you were scared to ask for, for more. Kind of like women is partially their fault when they're scared to like ask for a relationship because they're afraid that it might drive the man away if they speak to like being in a relationship. So it is what it is. Mm, don't get me so in a relationship again. Remember, you keep wanting to drag me to the Easter episode, don't you? Well, last, <laughs> well, last I checked, it was a relationship show and no one wants you to go back to that Easter. <laughs> Whew. Okay. So the other cat, the next category is the one that I find myself in is to treat women the way that you want to be treated and you have expectations that you will be treated um, in the way that you treat them and the way that you want to be treated and if you don't you demand that and, and it's funny because I remember once I really liked a woman 
and only once i know right <laughs> i really like this woman and it was so weird because i was like actively pursuing this woman and this woman would like give me shit i mean I mean, not give me any indication that I was on the right path or anything. And this happened a few times with, with women. It's like when I would pull back, then they would engage a little bit more and they would do just, and she would do just enough to leave me confused. And so um, finally, she invited me to a party. I went to a part, went to the party. Me and Pamela actually went. Pamela. And while I was there, she was like, kind of sort of ignoring me there. And so I'm like, okay, that's what's up. So wound up leaving the party. I was like, forget this. She calls me the next morning. Oh, no, before she called me the next morning, she was like, no, me and Pamela went back to Pamela's house and we were talking and I was like, what in the hell is that about? And Pamela uh, from our Ask a Woman segments said, well, you know, <laughs> she's an islander and the thing about islanders um specifically jamaican women is they're used to overly aggressive guys coming at them and so they can be a little bit more nonchalant because they know that dude is going to go over the top to go after them <laughs> and so and she was like that's not you and she was like when you said that you like the chick she was like, I don't really know how this is going to work because you ain't chasing chicks and she wants to be chased like that. Uh, and so she was oh, like, I remember those days. So she was like, that's all I can tell you about that. And so I was like, yeah, that sounds like some game shit to me. I, I'm not playing that. So I went home. The woman called me first thing the next morning and was like, yo, why'd you leave so soon? And I was like, well, yo, you were out there with your people and stuff doing your thing. I really just didn't think you had time or anything like that. And she was like, nah, where'd you get that from? I don't understand why you, where you got that impression. I'm like, how the fuck can I get, how, how can I not get that impression based on how you were acting and how you act toward me in general? I don't like to sweat the technique. Yeah, it's like, it's like pulling teeth and stuff like that. And for somebody who really claims to want to be in a relationship, you really making it hard. And then I mentioned what Pamela said and she was like, well, yeah, your friend is right. And she was like, I am used to a more aggressive guy and you're not aggressive. And I guess aggression is in the eye of beholder, especially in this day and age where being aggressive can Shit, get you- Did you lock out of 10? <laughs> Got that right. In my it's, whole, it's a job taken from you and all kinds of shit. Right, right. And then when you talk to all these women who talk about, well, I've been stalked by dudes and that's why I don't like giving out my number because they'll call me 50 times. And then the next one, this one is saying that you need to call 20 times. And yeah, exactly. Like, How the fuck are you supposed to know? Yeah. And I was just like, look, man, here's what I do. I like you. I'm telling you that now. So that tells me, ex tells, me ex tells you exactly where I stand. All of this stuff where I should do more and I should show this and all of this, I'm not doing all of that. And she said, cool, said we had an understanding and stuff like that, hung up the phone, I was encouraged. Man, I called her the next day and she was back to the same old BS. <laughs> and this has happened a few times where women have been like, well, you need to be more aggressive, basically telling me I need to be like those dudes in the first category that like put all of this investment, all of this investment and hope to get something in return. And it's like, if you're treating me like this off the rip, I don't even know what better will look like. It's like, I don't even know what the best of you is. So that's the other category that might speak partially to why I'm still single at 50. I don't know. But the one thing I won't do is I will not be that dude that Reggie calls a simp that, you know, just, and I don't even know if it's about letting a woman walk on you. It's just about. It's letting a woman walk on you. you no, know, it's just about having, having, having your own demands. But uh, my thing is this, um, on that, not the, the fact that, um, I love the chase. So it didn't necessarily the chase the chase never the chase never um 
bothered me as much because I love the chase, but I was a catch and release guy too. So it wasn't the fact that once I I was one of those, I'm the I'm the guy that most women hate back in the day because I do all this, all this, all this. And did I get you? Then like, okay, I'm done. Bye. <laughs> well, and, and Which see, is kind of fucked up. Well, yeah, and we had com- we had debate about that, and I thought that was foul, but I, it's just hard for somebody to tell me that they are really into this whole thing for love and all of that stuff, and they want serious relationships, yet and still their expectation is, I'm just going to lay back. And even though this dude is doing all of this stuff, it's like, I'm just going to like, just chill and let him do more and just treat him like shit. Even though I wasn't being treated like shit, it wasn't anything that led me to believe that this was a woman that I wanted to spend significant amounts of time with. So that was that. And so, and, and, and you know. <laughs> well, my thing is, let me clarify my position on that. Uh, the chase with me wasn't the fact that I did not. Wow, this thing is not coming back for real. Um, no. I love the catch and release and stuff like that. But it, the, the ground rules were, there we go. The ground rules were set up about, it goes back to the whole dating thing versus me just, just having a good time and flirting and shit like that. <laughs> now, when she actually started to show like, okay, no, I really, really, really like you. And I'm like, okay, uh, don't think we're going to continue this because that's not what this is about. I kind of told you this wasn't all about. So I'm um, cutting you loose now. <clears throat> so it wasn't the fact that I was trying to get to the, oh, I want you to fall in love with me and blah, blah, blah. But I just love the cat and mouse games of, of flirting and that stuff. <clears throat> I, I, I love that exchange. I love the chase, so to speak. Um, as my mom said, my non committal ass. <laughs> uh, but I've been married for 13 years, something must be going right. Hey, I guess I don't yeah. know. I haven't pushed down the steps yet, it's yeah. coming, but <laughs> you no know, steps, man. I'll tell you what, though, we me and the cat, <laughs> but basically, in this day and age, men are demanding more. It's like, like back in the day when like you'd be at the club and a guy would buy a woman a drink and a guy would think that that drink entitled him to be in her face all night and she'd spend the rest of the night shaking him like, yo, you just- Pretty much, <laughs> pretty much. Whereas that guy would be a creep back then. Nowadays, guys are like, you damn right I bought you a drink. Damn right, <laughs> you have to take the shit. Yeah. <laughs> shit yeah. the shit back. Yeah, that's on you. So it's like that kind of thing. And then it's like, shoot, even when guys are buying dinner, guys are just like, yo, you know, I paid for that meal. It's like back in the day, I think I might've told a story before when I went on a date and this was way back in the day when a woman actually tried to order something to go and then got mad at me when I told um, the waitress to put it on her tab. Yep, pretty much. Yeah. So it's like back then it was like you could get away with stuff like that. Nowadays, cats, um, you guys, they're not wow. playing that. And to me it's for the betterment of relationships even though women are like these dudes they ain't shit no more because they won't even do this and this i think it's better you know exactly what you're getting from a man and you <clears> won't <throat> be coming across a bitter dude later well, demanding a whole bunch of stuff from you that he should have demanded from the jump well shit it, it falls into the we had a uh, i think i told you about the story about the fact that going to dinner thing and you know women said this oh men are creeps because they just want sex and you damn right we want sex we just paid 300 dollars for you versus the fact that sometimes you call not me because i'm not I'm married but let's say i'm single and you're bored and you want some you want your, your dishwasher fixed and you want something to eat so you call me knowing i like you so you can go get your meal and on the way you say oh Damn, like this damn dishwasher just isn't working. You know, like I'm your fucking handyman, like goddamn the dude from damn uh, One Day at a Time and shit, Snyder, whatever the fuck his name is. I don't know what the fucking name is. They come in to fix your dishwasher. And then once I fix the fucking dishwasher, I get nothing. I don't even get a kiss. Hell, at least give me a blowjob. I'm just saying. His name, was, his name was Snyder. Oh, which okay. Interesting that you did remember that. So the reason I brought that up because my wife used to watch the show all the time. Interesting but, that I remember that. I know. Well, Yeah, it's just funny to me, like how the tables are turning and how the tables have turned, where it's like, and it's hard for women because women are the ones having to adjust to it because things aren't the way that it might have been for their parents or even like it was in their 20s and stuff like that. We talked about in another episode about how guys aren't even taking women out to dinner anymore. They're like taking them to get coffee. 
they're not even taking them out for drinks Mm-mm. because drinks are like 15 to 20 bucks a pop now unless they know they get some all that print some head head <laughs> tell you yep there you go there you go Reggie just saying <laughs> just saying dude yeah so i ain't taking you off for your damn conversation <laughs> we can do that shit on the phone <laughs> well i'm speaking more from perspective of people that actually like the person that they speak <laughs> on, but but no, they don't. That that we talked about that whole stuff. Going back to that Easter shit, talking about relationships in general. No one, we don't, we don't go on relationship because we actually like the motherfucker. We have all these other things, you know, like loneliness and shit. So hell, I can be lonely. You be lonely. We go, go get some drinks and get some head. Okay, but yep. for those of us who actually <laughs> want relationships, <laughs> what it comes down to in this day and age is it seems that women have to adapt to the fact that things are changing and oh you you actually brought up something because i saw this uh this court case which is to this to this point the fact that uh they're trying a group of women are trying to change the alimony laws because they actually make more money than their former spouses and they had to pay that money out so they say it's unfair <laughs> <laughs> not understanding the implications of what that would have on other women who have given up their career to be stay-at-home moms and stuff because god forbid i you know i'm looking like you said looking out for other people and shit it got all about me because a college-aged man should be able to go out and get his job and not have me sponsor his lifestyle because we're not divorced because i make more money Mm, it's, well, it's, yep. <laughs> well, I'm sure the Jill Scotts and the Mary J. Blige's of this world wouldn't have a problem with that. But so, <laughs> yeah. When, when it, I don't know. Be, be careful what you wish honestly, for. I don't honestly really know what alimony, well, I know what it is, but I don't really know how it really works. Now, child support is one thing. Yes. But, but alimony is different. And I would imagine kind of like Susan Rice. And her husband, Susan Rice, whose husband left his good job to stay home while she worked in the White House and he raised their children. And I watched something on um, Mona Scott Young, the person behind loving the loving hip hops and all of that stuff that makes black people look bad. <laughs> her husband stayed at home and raised the kids while she goes out and makes the money. So if we're talking about situations like that, when it comes to alimony, that just makes sense to me that they should be paid. You would think so, right? I would think so. Because if the situation, well, that's why alimony was actually put in place because women would give up, not not that they had careers in the first place, because, you know, back in the day, they just wanted you barefoot and pregnant. Uh, But now that women have entered the workforce and things have equaled out a little bit, I can understand. But if you gave up your career, man or woman, to take care of the kids and you did the 18 years or however long you did that and then all of a sudden the other spouse wanted a divorce yeah i believe in half <laughs> yeah or in cases like i think we discussed before like jeffrey jeff bezos mm-hmm. and his exactly. wife where she didn't start amazon but she was right there with them and mm-hmm. as such she should get what she what she gets what and, she gets did we speak about her getting married? We did speak yeah, about it. Yeah, we did speak about it. <laughs> Boy, that was a petty shit. I love yeah. it. That's a petty shit, though. <laughs> yeah, I just I just can't get past that. In all respect to her, you know, you got all the money in the world. And this is the difference between some women and other women. The, the good yeah. ones that we, I was laughing about for 15 minutes? Yeah, She's I'm a good not going to talk, distinguish between good and bad. I'm just <laughs> going to say that there are some women that will say, I make this much money or I have this much money. So... I am going to be lonely for the rest of my life because I want a man who makes as much as I do, if not more, or has as much as I do, if not more. Or you have someone who says, look, I love this dude because he has a decent heart and I'm still going to make him sign a prenup. But I love this dude. I love this dude. (laughs) He's getting a prenup, but yeah. Yeah, he has a decent heart and I'm going to marry him regardless of what he has he teaches school which means he makes little money unless he's been doing it for a very long time, long time. and he's he still making a little money yeah yeah but he, be, <laughs> but he could be tenured so he'd be set for life but oh no, no he was a high school teacher he was a professor 
Oh, I, I thought you could be tenured um in all levels of the no, school. dude. <laughs> no. Damn. And shoot. And, and in this day and age, shoot, you can't even get a pension some some of these places. Got that right. Yeah, but we got we got two minutes left. It, it we actually we have a minute and a half left. But the point in this whole podcast episode <laughs> was to put women on notice about the changing face of dating when it comes to these guys that you are meeting. Guys are not taking you out to dinner anymore. They are taking you out for coffee and then bitching because the coffee is too expensive. <laughs> Back like, time, I, baby. <laughs> yeah. They are not chasing you for months and months while you play coy and play hard to get and stuff like that. Guys are not doing that anymore. And it has nothing to do with the, with the, there are so many different women. So they're not investing time in our, in us. No, they just don't want to do that mess because we're getting older. They've been burned. And there's and, no, there's no real ROA. And for people who don't know return on investment for it, all yeah. the efforts that these guys are putting in, they learn. No, fuck all that. Yeah, it's like, especially at this age, if your old ass is still expecting some dude to chase you around the tree like we did when we were in um, sixth grade. Yeah, good yeah. luck with that. You're going you're gonna to run around that tree and get dizzy and find out that you're the only one running around that tree. So I say all that to say is, ladies, be a little bit more open-minded. <laughs> oh, you said some funny shit today. <laughs> open-minded good woman and accountability you said that all in damn in one in one 45 minute session you you, you didn't take this shit on the road that's just funny i can't with you today normally i will ask if you have any final words but we're just gonna let those be your final <laughs> words because i'm just scared of the next thing that'll come out of your mouth daddy well adult the podcast thank you for stopping by thank you all for listening once again thank you all for tolerating reggie and if you enjoy reggie thanks for enjoying him mm. yeah I like to, hey i like to enjoy you if you're uh five eight 140 145 Ching. like i said i was scared of the next thing that would come out of his mouth say say goodbye reggie goodbye reggie goodbye